Come in. We've got a great show today on the Armed Forces Crosses, second only to the Medal of Honor. We're going to take a look at the crosses of the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, and even two earlier crosses in American Military Awards history. So, come on. Let's go take a look. You'll enjoy it. Hello. Good to see you today. And welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm your host, Frank Foster. And because of many special requests, we're going to take a look at all of the service crosses of the armed forces, the Army, Navy, Air Force, and now the Coast Guard. So in the first one we'll take a look at is the Distinguished Service Cross of the Army. And you're going to say, hey, isn't that one up on the Sergeant Major's uniform? And then some eagle eye is going to say, wait a minute, that Distinguished Service Cross doesn't look correct. It looks too small, it looks too ornate. And the answer is, well, you're right and you're wrong. The first Distinguished Service Cross in 1918 was that size and that ornate. And then 100 or 200 later, they changed it to the design we see, we see today. And you're going to get to see those examples. Uh, you're also going to get to see, or I'm going to tell you, about the one man in the Army, a well-known American, who was awarded eight Distinguished Service Crosses in World War I, and had one of them revoked. <laughs> you want to hear that story. And we're also going to talk about the Navy Cross, which came just after the Army's Distinguished Service Cross in 1918. And it was originally awarded for both meritorious service and valor. But in World War II, the Navy Cross became only awarded for valor. And did you have any idea that there is one sailor in World War II who was awarded five Navy Crosses and a Silver Star or two? I'll tell you about him also. And then we'll take a look at the Air Force Cross, which is, well, almost the newest decoration out there for valor. It is uh, approved, I think, in the early 60s, retro to 1960. The first one was awarded to Major Rudolph Anderson, whose U-2 was shot down over Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And there's a beautiful memorial for him in Greenville, South Carolina. There were two other Air Force crosses retroactively awarded back to World War II, but most since then, and a number of them to Air Force pilots that survived six, seven years of prisoner in Vietnam. And then we'll take a look at the latest, the newest 2010 cross, the Coast Guard Cross, which has never been awarded yet because previously all Coast Guardmen during wartime are assigned to the Navy and the Coast Guard would receive a Navy Cross. And just as something rather special, so the Marines are not left out, I do want to show you right at the end that there was a Marine Corps Cross called the Brevet Medal. And we'll take a quick look at it. And then you'll have seen all of the crosses and maybe have a feel for how special they are. Second only to the Medal of Honor, the Distinguished Service Crosses, the Navy Cross, the Air Force Cross, and the new Coast Guard Cross. So, let's go take a look. As I mentioned, the Armed Forces Crosses come second only to the Medal of Honor, America's highest and most rarely awarded decoration. You can learn more about the Medal of Honor by looking at one of the two videos that we have out there. The Army Distinguished Service Cross was first instituted in 1918 and awarded for extraordinary heroism in action against an enemy of the United States while engaged in military operations involving conflict with an opposing foreign force. The first 100 Distinguished Service Crosses were manufactured in the Philadelphia Mint and numbered on the right side of the lower arm. The arms of the cross were embossed with oak leaves with an American eagle in the center of a diamond shape with stars on the corner of a diamond. Below the eagle was a scroll reading in Latin, or translated from Latin, for many come one. The reverse of the medal had the word for valor surrounded by a laurel wreath. The overall medal was influenced by the Art Deco design of the period and was soon replaced by a second design 
with decorative fluted edges and a small ornamental scroll topped by a ball at the end of each arm. The diamond and stars design was replaced by a reef behind an enlarged eagle, and beneath the eagle was a designation for valor. Several variations of the first type of Distinguished Service Cross were made in France, and if you ever found one, they're generally thinner and slightly smaller in size, and none of the French-made Distinguished Service Crosses were numbered. Captain Eddie Rickenbacker, America's Ace of Aces in World War I, was awarded nine Distinguished Service Crosses for valor. However, one of those Distinguished Service Crosses was revoked. And the reason why, because it was upgraded to a Medal of Honor. As you can see, that Eddie doesn't seem to be frowning in this picture. Brigadier General Billy Mitchell is shown wearing a Distinguished Service Cross among many other decorations from World War I. And here is a beautiful example of how the early Distinguished Service Crosses were numbered on the arm. In this case, 1491. The cross comes in a number of different variations. The initial issue is in bronze, but it is available in anodized or gold-plated. It comes with a regulation ribbon bar as shown, an enamel lapel pin. The back or the reverse of the metal is a place to have the recipient's name engraved. And it comes in miniature metals, a mini ribbon which is unofficial, and, well, even a hat pin. A more recent award of a Distinguished Service Cross for Exceptional Valor was to Staff Sergeant Eric R. Phillips, who was serving with the 2nd of a 503rd of the 173rd Airborne Brigade in Afghanistan. He is one of the most highly decorated members of the Army for service in Afghanistan. Here is an extraordinary display of an Army colonel who is retired now, but it shows his service in two different wars in which he's received a Distinguished Service Cross, multiple awards of a Silver Star, and of course the Purple Heart, for service in both World War II and in Vietnam. I'd like to take just a quick moment here and say special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain Inn, South Carolina, for providing all the medals and ribbons and badges you see in these displays. The Navy Cross is awarded to most members of the United States Navy, the United States Marine Corps, and in the past, the United States Coast Guard for extraordinary heroism in action against an enemy of the United States. It is worn after the Medal of Honor and before all other decorations. It was originally established by an act of Congress in 1919 and was initially awarded for extraordinary heroism or distinguished service in either combat or peacetime but the criteria was changed in August of 1942 and limited to the award for only extraordinary heroism in connection with military operations against an armed enemy. The four arms of the Navy cross are rounded. It has four laurel leaves with berries in each of the re-entry angles of the cross, which symbolize victory. And in the center of the cross is a sailing ship on waves. On the reverse of the cross are crossed anchors with cables attached, with the letters USN amid the anchors. The ribbon is navy blue with a white center stripe, and additional awards of the Navy Cross are denoted by gold stars 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. The Navy Cross comes in a full-size medal, as shown here in bronze on your left, and it is available as anodized or gold-plated. It comes in miniature medals, and you can see the reverse, of course, a regulation ribbon bar and an enamel lapel pin. Captain Roy Davenport, shown here as a lieutenant commander on board a submarine, received five Navy crosses for his aggressive combat leadership during 11 combat submarine patrols in World War II. Perhaps the most famous of the Marine Corps recipients of a Navy cross was Chesty Puller, shown here, who received his first Navy cross for fighting in Nicaragua against the San Antonias and all the way to Guadalcanal. He had five Navy crosses and one Army Distinguished Service Cross. In fact, a Navy lieutenant once asked him, once asked him, how did you receive so many Navy crosses? And he said, well, son, once you get the first one, you get on the mailing list. <laughs> what a sense of humor. A more recent recipient of a Navy Cross is Chief Petty Officer Justin Wilson, shown saluting here after he was awarded the Navy Cross in 2014. He is the first sailor in the eight-year history of Marine Special Operations Command to receive a Navy Cross for his heroism in Afghanistan. Another recent recipient is hospital man Luis E. Fonseca, 
who was awarded the Navy Cross for the fighting during the Iraqi War while serving with the Marines. Another recent example of a presentation of a Navy Cross was when the Commandant of the Marine Corps presented Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez with a Navy Cross in 2010. And there is another Navy Cross, which is actually not a cross, it's a Medal of Honor, but it was called the Tiffany Cross, as shown on your right. But it was actually the design of a Navy Medal of Honor from 1917 till 1942, and it went back to the design as shown on the left in 1942. Another rare cross and no longer used was a Brevet Medal, which was approved in 1921 and was, well, obsolete almost as soon as it was approved, and it was awarded to Marine officers who had been promoted for distinguished conduct and public service in the presence of the enemy. The Brevet Medal ranked only behind the Navy Medal of Honor, but only 23 were ever issued before becoming obsolete. The Air Force Cross was authorized on July 6, 1960 for extraordinary heroism while engaged in military action against the enemy of the United States. And before then, deserving Air Force personnel received the Army Distinguished Service Cross, and I've shown you some examples of that. And as I mentioned earlier, the first award of the Air Force Cross was made to Major Rudolph Anderson. The design of the Air Force Cross Medal in Ribbon is based on the design of the Army Distinguished Service Cross. The medal is a bronze cross containing gold-plated American bald eagle with wings against a cloud formation encircled by a green laurel reef. The awardee's name may be engraved on the reverse. And the ribbon has a very wide center stripe of Brittany blue with narrow stripes of white and red on the edge. The blue in the center of the ribbon is a lighter shade than that of the Army Distinguished Service Cross, and it indicates a close connection between these two awards. And additional awards are denoted by bronze and silver oak leaf clusters. The Air Force Cross is an extremely rare award for valor. Just over 200 presentations have been made, and here's an example where the Secretary of the Air Force presents the Air Force Cross to Staff Sergeant Zachary Reiner. George Everett Bud Day was a United States Air Force colonel and a pilot who served during World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War, including five years and seven months as a prisoner of war in North Vietnam. Day was a recipient of the Medal of Honor and the Air Force Cross, and as of well today, I think he is the only person to ever been awarded both medals. The Air Force Cross comes in a full-size bronze edition. I'm not sure if there is a gold-plated variation of this rarely awarded medal. It also comes with a ribbon bar, a lapel pin, and of course, a miniature medal, and a mini ribbon, and the unofficial hat pin. Just to sort of recap, uh, starting in your upper left-hand corner, famous airmen such as Lieutenant Frank Luke were awarded the Army Distinguished Service Cross during World War I. And over on your right, you can see General Eisenhower awarding uh, Captain Don Gentile and Colonel Don Blakely the Distinguished Service Cross in 1944. But perhaps the most interesting story is the picture in the lower left-hand corner, which is of Colonel William J. Dixie Sloan, who is really the first Air Force officer to be awarded the Air Force Cross. He was an Air Force double ace in World War II and originally submitted for the Distinguished Service Cross, but the action was never finished. In 1968, Sloan's son contacted General Spatz who was a former Air Force commander and requested the record be corrected. And in 1969, Colonel Sloan was awarded the Air Force Cross in lieu of a Distinguished Service Cross he'd never received for his heroism in July of 1943. And that brings us to our newest cross, the Coast Guard Cross, which was authorized in October of 2010. And it is awarded for extraordinary heroism in action against an enemy of the United States, while engaged in military operations against an opposing armed forces. The Coast Guard Cross is worn after the Medal of Honor and before all other decorations. The Coast Guard Cross was designed by the Coast Guard in conjunction with the Institute of Heraldry, and the medal is a cross in gold metal and colored epoxy and is two and a quarter inches in height and one and three quarter inches in width. The four arms of the cross are pointed with ship anchors between each arm, and centered on the front is a reef of 26 laurel leaves, 
13 to either side, and a depiction of the coat of arms of the United States of America, all in the appropriate epoxy colors. The suspension ring is part of the metal and a looped rope with crossed oars. The reverse is the same as the front, except that it does not display the reef and the shield. In their place is a center circle with the words four arched over the top and valor arched below. The ribbon is one and three-eighths inches wide and a dark blue with a central stripe of ultramarine blue flame, red and ultramarine blue on all the central stripes being separated by thin white stripes. As of 2021, I do not believe it has yet been awarded. <laughs> Uh, the Bear and I hope that you enjoyed the show today on the Armed Forces Crosses, the Army's Distinguished Service Cross, the Air Force Cross, the Navy Cross, and the new Coast Guard Cross. And uh, if you did, please give us a like, even better subscribe. That really helps keep us on the air. And look forward to having you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop.